All right, good Friday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and Bitcoin. Jim, finally cooling off a little Boy, bit. Boy, you know, it's funny because I Gary Cohen on me and I, I had to ask about Bitcoin because I think you're going to start seeing some regulation of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start doing these futures trades, when you start having these clearing houses do it, I think there'll be a lot of things that will not necessarily go right because of the hidden nature of Bitcoin. So what I am looking for to happen is government regulation. Once you get government regulation, you get government taxation. So I think these are all about to occur. And the people who are buying Bitcoin now, they should wait. Okay. They should wait to see what happens when these futures start trading on. All right, Jim, meanwhile, last night, the Boeing CEO told you that he'll beat Elon Musk to Mars. Fortune wrote about this, and Elon Musk responded on Twitter. Well, Musk is a combative guy, and remember, uh, the Boeing, a formidable company, working with NASA, Musk on his own. Musk has had great success in space. I mean, he has. He has great success. And this is going to be one of those things. It's not like Russia versus the United States. It's good guy versus good guy, and I meant that. I don't dislike Elon Musk. He dislikes me. He called me a, a simulate, 50% chance that I'm a simulation what? at a dinner party, which uh, for, it was it just one of those moments where it kind of took my breath away. But I do believe strongly that it is going to be a race, and I do believe Boeing's going to win. I bet on Boeing. Oh, well, I love the Boeing interview. You Thank talked you. about the Mr. 787. Yeah. Uh, and how about the idea? You know, one of the things that I asked Mr. McNerney, his predecessor, are you? Are we going to go back to having a plane maybe could take us an hour in London? Mm -hmm. And he said there was no demand for it. No, Mr. Mulberg admitted that this is going to be a major theme for him to get back into uh, super supersonic planes that can go from A to B very fast, which would be great. He also talked about how few people have ever been on planes, and uh, I do think that it's very interesting. You can dovetail what Laurent Potdevant, who is this fabulous CEO of Lulu, talked about with China, uh, and, what, uh, and what Mr. Mulberg talked about, which is that there's 140 million people in China that are just beginning to travel, which is the size of Germany and France together. And so Laurent was saying, and, and they discovered that Lulu is this great thing to have, and the Boeing CEO is saying they discover how great flight is. So there's a positive China story too. Uh, there was a lot to recommend, and I do think that Boeing, when I used my $400 price target, uh, I meant over a couple of years, and I know some action alerts people, and we have to, our, we can do our own new uh, terrific, uh, really just uh, four club members uh, report here. But I, I, I do think, yes, should the trust have bought Boeing? Uh, yes. Uh, we can, it's next year, I mean, I cat, Boeing, United Technologies, uh, these have all stuck in my craw as things that, in 3M, we were in 3M once, mm -hmm. that, I, that we didn't pull the trigger on, and I beat myself up about it. Uh, speaking of 3M, JP Morgan has a note out about it saying that there's a disconnect between growth potential and valuation. Yeah, you know, uh, I, far be it for me to criticize Tusa because, boy, did he nail GE. But the key thing about that was in the right-hand corner of the piece of research, he did raise his price target. So he's, he's not like 3M. But he did talk about what cycles it was levered to, and maybe those cycles will peter out. I always like, because my father worked for 3M and sold a lot of their stuff, that they were always inventing new things. And Inga Tulin has continued that tradition. So I, I, I'm hoping that 3M comes down, because we would love to add it to the bullpen for action alerts, but it's not going to come down. All right, Jim, who do you have on Mad Money tonight? You know, we have TriPoint, and I'm glad you asked me about that, because TriPoint's a housing company, and you know the state and local tax issue, uh, Gary Cohn addressed it, National Economic Advisor, says there's going to be some talks this weekend about it, but there really is a, what I, um, as someone who has uh, property in New Jersey and New York, I'm very concerned. Now, I'm doing well in life, so it's not like I'm, you know, wow, steamed, but, you know, the value of our properties is going to move down big if this happens, and I think everyone has to be cognizant of that, obviously, um, this is a blue state, red state thing, but um, the lack of deductibility will radically change uh, what a house is worth. And, and I think people have to recognize that. Another big day of interviews for you, Jim. I'm very excited about it. All right. I, I, and thank you for mentioning the Boeing because when I saw the Musk thing, I said, Musk is so competitive and, and Molenberg is so competitive. Let the best man win. <laughs> Jim Kramer, that's tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on CNBC. Thank you. Jim and I are going to continue the conversation. We're going to talk about the jobs numbers yes. and Broadcom, but you have to go to actionalertsplus.com to watch us there. No, we got to give club members an edge. They yep. deserve it. All right, we'll see you there.